How's it going, everyone? How's it yeah. going? I'm going to bump up this music a little bit while it's just us three, while we wait for Solar Stone to join us and his tour manager, Paula. Yes, so excited for today's interview. It's going to be so cool. We've got some exciting, exciting uh, rewards to give out, too, um, or at least to announce the winners. And that's, uh, yeah, can't wait to find out who's going to be our grand prize winner here. Yeah, me too. If, you, if you're here with us, Say hi in the chat. Oh, yeah, hello. Where's, where's our record shop family at? Coming in later. Everybody's I'm a little sure. slow today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, let me see. Who's here? Hey, hey. I didn't host again to my own stream, did I? Done that nope, before. Just, we're on the right one. We're on the right one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Angelica is Angelica. here. Good to see you. Nice to see you. We're yeah. going to have to invite some more of the community team on sometime soon. For sure. Big shout out to Angelica. For those of you that don't know, she just joined our team on the community team. We're really excited to have her here. Uh, so make sure you give her a warm welcome, both here on Twitch and in the Discord. Yeah. Hey, Tyrion. Hey, TM. Welcome, politicos and angry ARB. Angry Arb. <laughs> hey, Wushak. Nice. Welcome. What's up, JR? All right. So before we bring them on, I'm really excited to say that today we have with us uh, a couple of our friends. We've got Solar Stone with us. And anybody who's been here since day one, you know Solar Stone from all of our uh, Genesis, well, not all of our Genesis packs, but from the early, early days, one of our first artists. And we've also got with us his tour manager and one of the co-founders of Record Shop, Paula. Let's Paula. Paula. I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name. I'll let her do it. <laughs> it's Paula V. That's <laughs> fine. All right, let's bring them on. Here we come. Hi. Oh, hello. Hey, let's y'all. You guys up there we top. go. What's up? What's up? Big welcome, Paula. Big welcome, Rich. So glad Hi. you're both here. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Paula is a uh, record shop co founder, uh, my tour manager, and long term girlfriend as well. Love oh. it. Beautiful. <laughs> I don't think uh, JR sent it for, for that comment, but I'm posting Maybe this. Fire. Dirty that fire. fire. Love <laughs> it. Yeah. But uh, looks like we have some uh, lots of people on today. We've got lots of excitement because mm -hmm. we get to announce something very special today. Before we do that, <laughs> Chris, do you want to give us an overview of the challenge kind of from start to finish that we've done? With yeah. You? Of course, of course. So for our Depths of Emotion pack, the first theme pack that we've had featuring Trance, really, really excited to have Rich here. He was kind of, a, I guess you really kind of the featured artist of that pack to a degree, um, definitely for this challenge. And uh, to, to really celebrate that, we made this a ASOT 1000 Utrecht challenge. Um, you know, doing things the way we do at Record Shop sometimes ended up being quite complex. <laughs> There were three rewards that users could win. Uh, the first is a rare reward. Um, in order to earn the rare reward, all you had to do was collect all of the Solar Stone collectibles in the Solar Stone set. Um, so we had many, many entrants complete that. Really exciting to see. Uh, then the next reward was Legendary Reward. Uh, and this one is something I don't think has ever been done in the NFT space. And I've got to give you, Rich and Paula, a shout for putting this together. Um, <laughs> But this is a lifetime guest list card. So yeah. if you're one of, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. One of twenty, the twenty yeah. people get it. It was originally ten, and then yeah. we doubled it to twenty. And uh, I mean, it's a ma it's a really massive thing to get for a fan to get, you know, lifetime guest list to Solar Stone Club shows. I mean, I could be doing this for another fifty years. <laughs> you hope <Appreciate> so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, to, to do one of those as an NFT, you know, for a, for a, an artist, I think is a lot, but for 20, I think, yeah. kind of, you know, it's a lot. 
So I mean, we couldn't we couldn't really have offered a bigger prize apart from the bigger prize that we offered. <laughs> yeah, too bad we couldn't give twenty of those as well. But I think uh, you know one is incredible already. <laughs> so. Might need to have tour managers though. No. Yeah, no, I don't think no. so. <laughs> so then uh yeah so this is a legendary card um i believe it's the f yeah it will be the first legendary card on the platform on top of that and as being a legendary card it comes with a legendary reward um so each of those enables lifetime guestless access to to solar stone shows which is crazy like i said i don't think that's been done anywhere else uh so we're so thrilled to have you offering that on our platform um and for your fans even even it's even more exciting well, um, I can and then last, I'm yep. actually retiring next week. Ah, <laughs> <got him. laughs> that was yeah, the, that was the loophole. <laughs> Jr. <laughs> okay, now we know. So, that would put us in a tough spot, but I got a feeling that's not the case. Hopefully, there's. Well, many, many, you many just many. said you just said fifty years. Yeah. yeah. 50 years i'd be lucky if i'm here for another 10 but uh <laughs> it's still i mean it's still an amazing thing i mean no. i find the whole record shop thing i love i love the record shop platform be able to actually do this is uh i mean we couldn't have done this before i don't think because it would have been it wouldn't have been possible without the whole gamification and cards and collectibles and stuff so just to get to here from six months ago where this didn't even exist is that's mind-blowing on its own yeah, and I know I know you've both been around for a lot of that six, last six months ride. Um, if it's even been that long, it's kind of hard to keep track of these days. <laughs> I think it's just barely been that long. Um, sorry. Well, we've been working on Record Shop for the majority of the year, but we didn't yeah. know it until August. So. Right. So. Sweet. We'll get into your involvement soon, Paula. And yeah, I can't uh, wait. To you're like your very important role with record yeah, shop but we'll get sure. into that after we announce the winner cool yep and then the last reward we'll go ahead and just highlight this real quick it's a mythical reward uh so just to go back over the legendary reward there were two contests for that one was a highest serial contest which was a bit involved and complicated and we got some feedback from the community on that um in order to uh, mitigate that the best we could we made a second contest and that was what prompted the additional legendary winners um, for the lowest serial average um, details of that are on the rules so I'm not really going to get into it here uh, but just wanted to highlight that real quick and then last for the we have the mythical reward uh, and as the name implies it truly is mythical this is a one of one collectible on record shop um, thousand coin face value and this entitles you to be solar stones tour manager during the ASOP 1000 Utrecht event. Huge, huge gig. Wow. Not just for Solar Stone, but just overall. Um, and the ability to have all access as, you know, Solar Stone's partner in crime, basically. Ho hopefully they're not taking over your spot too much, Paula, but <laughs> you can have a buddy for the day. They have to get me out of bed. They have to make sure I've got my glasses. Yeah. Yeah. They have to make sure we get to the, the venue. They get to read nope. the stage, meet everyone. I mean, Estate of Trance 1000 Utrecht is the biggest trance party ever. So it, you couldn't really get a better hype, especially if you want to get behind the scenes, you know. Yeah, it's it's a huge, huge prize. I'm going to be very, very jealous of the winner when we select them here in a, in a short bit. Um, but yeah, basically that's the overview of the challenge. Um, all around all revolved around uh, your collectibles here on the platform and record shop just like you said made it for like a competition challenge gamified which made it a whole lot of fun i think for people even though we had some some bumps getting started with it um yeah so we're super super excited i'm going to post the official results here in a minute um and then we'll do the when do we want to do the the final draw is that after the interview uh lisa <laughs> we should do it earlier okay I think people are probably just holding on by the seat of their pants so excited well we had we had so many people complete the set do we want to wait until there's a few more of those people actually tuned into tuned into this we've currently got 57 of them watching all right yeah let's let's give it a few more minutes at least we can start get started with the interview sure there's probably people yeah. on the way home from work going, oh my God, oh my God, driving the car. Bad face. <laughs> uh, get clean. We need to, I need to tune into Twitch. Yeah. Got to get cleaned up for my, for my uh, grand prize winnings. 
<laughs> so, awesome. uh, Solarstone, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe how you got started in music? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm 49 years old. No, I know I don't. Um, <laughs> a day uh, over 20. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how I got into music? Well, I grew up in uh, the middle of nowhere in Wales. Um, and there were no, there was no record shops, there was no town, there was no buses. The only way I could listen to music was either by the Top 40, which happened on a Sunday on BBC Radio 1, or by Radio Luxembourg. This it was a, a radio station that I managed to listen to via an FM aerial that we had. Um, and I remember listening to Radio Luxembourg in 1986 and hearing this new type of music called house music. And I'd always, you know, I'd always wanted, I'd always imagined myself being a musician of some kind, but I couldn't really play an instrument. <laughs> so I remember hearing house, early types of house music on Radio Luxembourg. And I thought, oh my God, you know, that's something maybe I could, I could do because I'm not like a guitarist or piano player or anything. And then 87 came and when 88 came and went, and then I left school um, and I moved to uh, a town in the UK called Dudley and I got a job in a pub and I met a couple of guys and became friends and we decided to form a band and we were called Emission and we were like a, sort of like an indie indie dance band. I'd got myself a keyboard by this time. My great aunt died, leaving me a thousand pounds in her will, which was a huge amount of money. I, you know, we were very poor as kids. We never had anything. And so I used this thousand pounds to buy it keyboard a cool game one and i wow. started producing music on there and i met these guys and we formed a band and then we started doing some gigs around the uk we played with some pretty big uh pretty big indie bands from the area and um and it was at one of those gigs where i met my ex-partner andy and he's the guy who convinced me to start you know producing some house music he introduced us he introduced me to a friend of his called sam who had a load of equipment and that's where we became, after a couple of years, became Solar Stone, which was at the time was two words. Uh, and that was, it kind of went from there. So that was 1996 when I released the first Solar Stone track. And then wow. over the next 10 years, first Sam left and then Andy left because of musical differences, you know. And uh, that's how I got to where I am. Now here we are, 2021. How many years later is that? 96? 2005. Twenty-five, yeah. Twenty-five years we later. We missed your twenty-fifth anniversary. <gasps> we did. Oh we no! Did. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Oh dear. Well, we also missed the the twentieth anniversary of Seven Cities coming out. It was meant to happen in twenty nineteen, and it actually happened in twenty twenty one. Whoops! It's a bit like that's a sort of one thousand taking place two years after it should have taken place. <laughs> it's just been that kind of year the past couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so that's okay, I get... the story, man. All right. Well, then, how did you get involved in record shop? Then, I guess is my next question. Well, um, Obi, our grand founder and CEO, um, contacted Paula out of the blue, saying he had an idea that he wanted to run past her. Uh, we'd met over Ob several times. I released a couple of his tracks on my labels. We'd met. Where did we meet Ob originally? Um, Ibiza and a couple of other Ibiza places. And Ibiza. we just knew we just knew Ob as like he was a big trance fan and a really nice guy, and we got on really well. And he called he called, called Paula out of the blue and said, "I've got this idea. I want to run past you, you know." Uh, and so she had a call with him for about three hours where they were shooting this this idea backwards and forwards and. Uh, he actually said to us a while later that it was during this call with Paula where he was actually convinced that it was a good idea and wanted to give it a try. And then he called me a little while later as an artist and said, what do you think? Of it? And I just remember, I remember him explaining the, the thing to me and there was a point at which I just had a huge like, epiphany that this was an incredible idea. Um, and you know, for the last 20 years, things have been going downhill in terms of selling music as an artist and a record label. And it just, you know, the whole digital way of doing things was just like 
it was getting worse and worse and we were having to send artists on the label these crappy statements you know they had they'd had 300,000 streams on Spotify and Armin van Buren had played their track but they were still only getting a statement for like 80 quid and this whole thing about music is valuable and about restoring a sense of excitement and, and value to music digitally I think it's just incredible and I'm extremely honoured to be involved and I'm also extremely proud of Paula to have been involved in this from day one and it's such an important part of the whole record shop journey so far um, and here we are now you know we've done, done this challenge we've we're doing all this cool stuff there's some the biggest names in the industry involved there's all you guys there's like 80 or something people working for record shop and everyone's from the music industry background it's just so fresh it's such a breath of fresh air and it's exactly what the electronic music industry needed and i couldn't possibly be more positive about it but, um, uh, that's awesome Love it, love it. I mean, that leads great into the next question because uh, I think many people might not know here that Paula is a crucial member of our team and also a co-founder here at Record Shop. Um, maybe you want to tell your side of that story a little bit, Paula, and how we got to where we are? Well, I think Chris, uh, Chris Rich summed it up pretty <laughs> yep. well how, um, how I got on board, Ovi reaching out and basically telling me this whole idea of what he had in mind with Record Shop. I wouldn't and know. Who's Chris? <laughs> That's Chris. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, <laughs> Obi, Obi and I got on a call and we exactly, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit skeptic. So I was playing devil's advocate during the call. I was saying, this is why it won't work. This is why it won't work. And Obi kept coming back like, yeah, but what about this? What about this? But at the same time, he got me extremely excited because there were so many things within the music industry and I've been, you know, I've got my own agency, I've been an artist manager and I've seen artists getting really demotivated where they put so much passion into their art and then seeing that they can't actually make a living on the back of it and it's, I think that's part of the whole industry that a lot of the, the fans might not uh, see how much effort goes into it. We're not all uh, people that make thousands of money when they put out an album. It's it's quite limited. So the whole fact that we could introduce scarcity again, just like back in the day when we had vinyls and there was this excitement about getting your hands on something where you knew that we're only going to be a thousand and the people thought as a collector's item and they were willing to spend 10 or $15 to buy that vinyl that we finally had the opportunity to bring that into the digital world but reward fans at the same time and the possibility that it opened up to be creative as an artist again empowering creators again that just i mean i read really after that all i literally lay awake for the whole night just thinking about we could do this we could do this we could do this um so I got on board at Record Shop, and at the moment, I'm, um, my role at Record Shop is to have partnerships. So together with my team, we actually go out and talk to all the creators out there to explain to them what Record Shop can do to them and try to get them on board so they can sell their music and their collectibles on our platform as well and show them how we're here to change the industry for the better for creators out there. Yeah, she's, that's a really good point, you know, changing the industry for creators and fans too. Music has been so devalued because it's been, there's been no, uh, you know, it's just so readily available for pretty much free. Now we can do something limited edition and create a special concept and a special release of an album and make fans actually feel that they've, they've got something valuable by being one of only, say, one of only 500 people who's got the new Solar Stone album. Or one out of one and being a tour manager. Yeah, <laughs> that's we true. Do this before, could we? We could do anything like this and it just seemed like we were giving everything away and every people were supporting us or consuming music passively and, you know, the only way that you could see yourself supporting an artist was to go to a gig or to buy a t-shirt. But now it's kind of, we've turned the clock back 30 years and we've, I mean, you've got a great group of super fans, and I do want to point out that, uh, you know, they've been supporting and they've been very essential, but we've never actually had the possibility in the way how Record Shop 
uh, enables us to do to reward these fans for being so supportive. And I think that's very, very important as well. It's perfectly fine if you want to listen to music, but if you actively support an artist, I think it's great that there's this fan engagement and that we can reward these fans for being so supportive over the years. Very important. Yeah, good point. There was an article, wasn't there, which said, uh, as an artist, you only need, I think it's like 5,000 fans who kind of support you, you know, properly support you by buying whatever you do to actually have a career in this industry. And now with Record Shop, you can actually, can actually make that happen. Everyone gets something special and unique and the artist gets to continue to make the music to make his fans happy, you know, providing a soundtrack to, to their lives. So, rah, rah, Record Shop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That means a lot. Yeah so, seem, yeah, so it seems like your experience on Record Shop has been pretty good so far. Do you want to touch base on that a little bit more and then maybe uh, go into your tour a little bit? Uh, well, we started the tour. Uh, it was obviously our first tour back after COVID. Which well, was, COVID is still happening. Yeah, the after first... the shutdown. The first time we went back to the USA after all the travel restrictions, because I don't know, I think the travel restrictions for us coming from Europe or the UK were lifted on November 8th, which meant that we could finally come back on tour. And we kind of had scheduled this tour, hoping that by then the whole pandemic was kind of going to be blown over. I was wrong. Mm. But we, um, it was a five week tour and we started. Um, we didn't even, I mean, normally we book all the flights and everything way in advance, but we were holding off and holding off booking any flights because we really weren't sure up until the week before whether it was going to happen. And then we all, we both came down with COVID uh, <laughs> 10 days before, 10 no, days no, or two no, weeks earlier. before, was it something yeah. like two weeks before we left? So it was really like getting our, our recovery tests and stuff to actually come and start the tour in Denver was a big deal. Um, so we started in Denver and then we ended up going to Mexico city, uh, cause there was this big record shop, like get together thing there. And we decided to do this, uh, a state of trance 1000 after party just for people who had either uh, bought a solar stone collectible or got one of these wristbands, wristbands actually at the state of trance show. And that was just mental. It was the first estate of the first record shop, like themed event, wasn't it? Yep. It is proper, like underground acid house venue and it was proper me and ob djing and it was a really great vibe and atmosphere and knowing that everybody was there because of record shop you know such a buzz wasn't it it was really kind of like this is what it's about it uh, i'm so fun. jealous i wasn't there <laughs> sounds the like a great show well, 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 yeah, there will be more yeah i remember the dream state and uh maybe you want to tell for the people who don't know what dream state is uh, oh, Dream State is, um, it's, the, well, it's, it's uh, an American company who do these great big events all around the States, mainly on the, uh, on the West Coast. Uh, and I played there and I was really hoping to wear a, my record shop t-shirt, but um, I, Obi gave me one, but it was absolutely huge. I would have looked like wearing a tent or something on stage. But then I went off and I got a couple of record, record shop t-shirts printed and I wore one of those at... Um, the academy party, didn't I? Uh, Following Saturday. No, you had uh, Seattle and Seattle, Hamilton yeah. in between as well. Yeah, we did a couple of other gigs. We played at the Underground in Seattle, which was uh, which was one of my favorite nights. And then we went to Canada, and then we went back to LA to do a, a post Dream State recovery party at Academy, which is one of the best clubs ever. Mm. Uh, that's where I filmed a lot of the stuff that I've been using on socials over the last week, releases on the label and that. Uh, and then we did Las Vegas last weekend, and now we are in this lovely little place called Stinson Beach uh, for a few days before we go to San Francisco for the final gig of the tour, which is at the Public Works on Friday. And then we go home. That's quite the tour. Wow. Sounds like a is lot that of a, Is that a typical tour schedule for you? Like, This is the longest time I've ever actually been away for, but... Um, we decide we we decided during the whole lockdown thing that this whole flying away see one of the things about being an electronic music producer is that you don't really make a living from selling music 
you know. Up until now. Up until now. You know, you can't live from your, like, you know, if I went back 15 or 20 years, I made a reasonable living from my royalties and stuff like that. And DJing was something that I would do to promote my releases. But we've got to a stage now in the electronic music industry or in the music industry general, generally, unless you're a massive A-list name, you release music to get gigs, to promote yourself as an artist so that people will book you to do gigs. So pre-COVID, you know, I was flying off to, I'd fly off to Tokyo on a Friday, I'd get back on Monday, I'd fly off to LA on the Friday, I'd get back on Monday. And we were killing ourselves with this, with this schedule. So we decided during uh, the lockdown that we weren't gonna do that anymore. And instead we were gonna plan out chunks where we would go away for four weeks would say to the promoters this is when we're going to be in america take it or leave it we do a tour and then we come back and then we you know we go back in six months or even in a year so as i said this is the longest i've ever been away from my son mm. uh, ever but we've packed in like seven or eight gigs into this period and then we can go home and then know okay I won't be going away for that long again for another six months. Or even. Yeah, I think a lot of people need to realize how taxing it can be on an artist, especially, you know, I mean, Rich points out traveling during the weekends, but remember that if he's back on Monday and you're jet lagged, that's where you start making the music, the music that you need to have to get those gigs to, to keep up with it. And at the moment, it's not uncommon that you need to have a release out every six weeks. Then Rich does a radio show as well, which takes like half a day or a full day of preparations. Uh, there's the morning show that he does that goes out every every morning on, on his Twitch channel. So there's all these things that are happening between the traveling as well. So you come back home on Monday, you're completely jet lagged, you're tired. And all this other stuff needs to be done to keep the business going. And then on Friday, you're doing the same thing again. You know, you're never there for family events, you know, having to miss your kid when you're away. So that was a very conscious decision that we were going to, because it's mentally taxing, it's, it's taxing on your body. And we just decided that we didn't want to do that anymore. And I think there's a lot of artists out there who are kind of looking in a different way on the way how they want to tour, mm -hmm. the way they want to release their music. And I think that's Record Shop came in at the very right time. And there's going to be a lot of other artists actually on our platform because it's empowering them to kind of take control back and say like you know i don't i don't heavily rely on my touring income anymore because there's record shop and there's value into my art yeah D djing isn't the job i mean some people think a dj just turns up at the gig and then goes back and then they're chilling out for the rest of the week but it's actually djing is is what you do after you've done everything else you know you've mm -hmm music, run a record label, run a publishing company, do social media, uh, produce music, and then you go on tour to, to like deliver the message. Uh, so we have to be, we have to kind of make the whole thing make sense. And before, you know, it was getting to the point before COVID where it was just ridiculous. You know, I mean, everybody, you know, it's not just the music industry, people work hard for a living. But imagine working hard for a living and, and you know, 90% of what you do is basically you're not getting paid for. You're just doing the last 10% in order to get paid. That's kind of how it is in the music, music industry now. You do all of these things, release music, radio shows, podcasts, the lot, in order to get the gigs which pay the bills. Now, hopefully, with Record Shop, it will become a bit more balanced and we can be a bit more selective over the gigs we do and spend a bit more time together like a normal couple. That's awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize just how not so glamorous that jet set life really can be. And just like you said, it's uh, it's crazy to just hear how taxing it really is. Just it's like, not glamorous at all. Not yeah. at all. We're, not, sure. we're not complaining. No, trust, no, no, no. Trust no. us, because we're in a very, very lucky position to even travel the world, meet all these fans. So don't get us wrong. I do. It's just want to highlight uh, that it's really hard work. The know? music industry needs to, needs to change. You know, uh, the whole streaming thing has just got to the point where the only people who benefit from it are the huge artists, the major labels and the streaming companies themselves. And there needs to be another way to connect with your fans and sell your music. And Record Shop is it. That's why we've embraced it so much and have been shouting about it for the last six months. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, ranting again. You gave me a platform. What do you expect? <laughs> hey, we're, we're glad you're here for it. And that's a, that's a pretty good segue, actually, because uh, one of the next questions I had was one that was also on my list to ask. And this one comes from the audience, uh, Midwest NFT, passionate member of our community. Um, the question was, which artists were your inspiration growing up? And was there anyone that you dreamed that you could become? Uh... I was uh, I loved Adam and the Ants when I was a kid. Um, if you're not above a certain age, you wouldn't have heard of them. But then my next love, I, my next love was Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and they were produced by a guy called Trevor Horn. And Trevor Horn is a, like a legendary producer, and I always loved his massive productions and how detailed they were and how precise they were. They produced uh, he produced um, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, Art of Noise, ABC, loads of really polished. Acts. And also, my mum was a big ELO fan, Electric Light Orchestra, and the guy behind that is a guy called Jeff Lynn, whose productions were also really big productions, really finely polished and detailed and really well executed. And so um, that was kind of, that, those were the aspects of music that I loved as I was when I was a kid. And then I got into the Pet Shop Boys, and I loved the fact that their music was always very intelligently produced and very highly polished and, you know, it was kind of had a really high level of sophistication about it. And those elements, even subconsciously, I think, were what I wanted to do as an artist. Um, so I was, I, I was into early house music and early rave music and that kind of thing. But I always felt that it was a bit kind of, a bit kind of um, rough. It wasn't very highly polished or tightly sequenced or anything. And then when Sasha and Digweed brought out the first Renaissance compilation, that kind of made my ears prick up because it was so precise and the productions were so, again, you know, highly polished and really kind of widescreen productions. So it kind of gave me a direction in what I wanted to do as a producer. And I think that has ended up with what I do with Solar Stone. You know, the music's all very carefully thought out and, you know, it's very shiny and clean and that's where and you know, that's i think that answers your question right yeah definitely yeah so yeah big vegetable boy fans if we ever get married we're gonna have a petra boy song played aren't we yeah. we're not yeah. gonna... do you know which one we do but we can't tell you oh it's a secret mm. all right i'll have to go through the discography see if i can guess which leads me to <laughs> 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 Hey, touching touching base on your tour again. Actually, can I ask Paula a question? Yeah. So, okay. for our audience who has never been on tour or who does not know how that works, um, what does the tour manager do? So there's two sides of it. So there's the tour management in advance of a tour, where you have to book the flights, you are in touch with the promoter to get the itinerary details. So, for example, before a show, I will reach out to the promoter of the club with a form where they need to give us the contact information. Um, who's gonna be in charge of the night? Who can we contact? Who are gonna be the drivers picking us up at the airport? What's the time? Uh, what time do we wanna go to the venue? Who's the driver then? Uh, hotel information, making sure you've got reservation numbers, making sure that everything is sorted so when we get to the location where the show is happening that things happen very smooth and that we're well prepared then at the show of course it's still following up maybe sometimes the driver doesn't show up and you know the tour manager needs to give that number that you got for the driver to call them like where are you or maybe rich wants to sleep a bit longer before going to the venue and the pickup time needs to be changed to a later slot uh, maybe flights get cancelled and the flight needs to be rebooked. Uh, for example, on this tour, we were supposed to play in Vancouver that got uh, cancelled due to COVID restrictions and we ended up playing in LA, but it means that you need to book the flight to fit into the tour. At the event, you need to make sure that the drinks rider, and a drinks rider basically means it's the rider... Very important. Very important <laughs> with the drinks that it, that the artist uh, has, you know, so he can uh, he can he has something to drink himself, but maybe also the guests that we invited, like special guests that we have on our guest list, 
There's also the technical rider where in advance you need to make sure that all the technical equipment has actually been arranged for by the promoter. And then when we get at the event, sometimes there's a sound check. Sometimes there's no time to do a sound check because we arrive very late. Have to make sure that the DJ equipment that Rich is playing on is also sorted uh, according to the technical rider that we send over. So there's all these, maybe there's interviews that need to be done ahead of the gig uh, that need to be arranged for making sure that it fits within the schedule. If we arrive late, we might want to do it as close as possible to when Rich actually goes on, but you also don't want it too close to the set because Rich needs to prepare for it, you know, be, needs to be in the right mindset where we can't finish an interview literally one minute before it has to go on. Maybe there are mean and greed with fans that, are, you know, that we need to. So there's all these little bits and logistics that a tour manager needs to make sure are arranged for and are happening in the most smooth possible way. So Rich, as the artist, doesn't really have to worry about them. you got to make sure that, the you know, you're not being crowded out by people on stage you've got to make sure this sounds ridiculous but you've got you need to make sure that when the gear is there you've got to make sure there's somewhere to put your drink and somewhere to put the laptop you know because i get to so many gigs and where we haven't been to the sound check and uh there's not even anywhere to put my laptop you know you just got a dj setup and then you can't even put the laptop anywhere or your drink and they're falling all over the floor just little things like that it's just like a it's a lot of stuff yeah i'll tell you this the the best compliment I've ever had at an event was a fan coming up to me. I know a lot of people think you're a bitch, but you're looking after your artist. <laughs> and I took that as a compliment. True. Yeah. You I'm just... allowed to swear on this, right? I mean, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. In this <laughs> I think uh, hopefully we didn't scare anyone away from that grand prize there. <laughs> yeah. So. I... The no. point is that whoever wins, Paul is going to be very excited that you're there to help. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, I still want this to be a fan experience as well, so I won't put you to work. I'll be doing a lot of the preparations, but you'll get an insight of what it's like to be backstage and just what happens behind the scenes. And maybe I'll ask you to give me, you know, give you give me a little hand with things. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get to meet all the other artists and stuff, and it will be, you know, see how it works because it's very different behind the scenes than when you're when you're at the front. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of mind blowing. And a state of trance one thousand. I mean, that's that, a there's a very big organization happening there. They've got a radio studio at the event where Armin is doing interviews. Wow. All the other artists are playing on the stages. I think there's five stages. I mean, we're talking about a 30,000 capacity event. That's so but cool. It's, and it's amazing. I mean, imagine that you're actually be able to stand on the stage, well, on the side though, when Rich is playing his set and seeing it right from the stage yeah. instead of being, although I have to say being on the dance floor is still the best spot you can be. Part. That's so this awesome. is actually the record shop have flown you in and put you up in a really nice hotel, by the way. Yep. Get you flown in, get you in a nice hotel. Uh, I hear the green rooms and artist areas are pretty nice at events of that caliber too, right? They are, and they actually have really, really good catering. I mean, sometimes there's no catering. You know, we have to buy our own food, but I have to say I'll give it up to a state of trends. They've got a proper green room, dressing room, artist catering it's really they all Aldo is Aldo isn't it yeah Aldo events who do the estate of trans shows I mean they are the best the best at organizing things and everything is really is always spot up you know props to them for that super cool awesome you do it how, how are we doing on time how are we doing on time is it time <laughs> I don't know. What is the audience? We just today? talked about the grand prize. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Did they even want to know who won? <laughs> All right, well, in the meantime, I can drop the official results. So maybe we go over the um yeah, the I can top share my screen and share uh, top tens. Yeah, top tens, the two top tens. Um, I'll share the list here so everyone can check the overall reward winners for the rare card, which is also very special. I don't think I talked about the details of it. Um, but Rich has prepared something really special for the for the rare card winners. Um, yeah, we used to do well, back in back during uh, before lockdown. During lockdown, I started doing this thing called the Pure Mix, which was a special mix that I did featuring a load of great tracks that I'd released on my labels and my own releases over the previous period. And then 
because of, of what I was referring to before about the whole streaming thing, we realized that we were giving away this mix to people basically, and none of the artists or anything were making anything from it. So we decided not to do it. But I decided for Record Shop to bring it back and do the Pure Mix 3 featuring a load of brilliant tracks released on the label and only make it available to people who had uh, entered this competition. That's awesome. Wow. Super excited to give that away in a beautiful, rare collectible. I'm sure our fans here are going to be super excited to get it too. All right. So I got up on the screen right now, Chris, posted in the chat with the official results for everything. But let's look at our top 10 high average cereals, top 10 low average cereals, uh, we won't go through the rare card winners because there's like 157 of you all. And if you go to the mythical card, you'll see that it's empty because we'll do that next. 52. Back to back is what JR is saying. <laughs> so these, are the first 10, these are the first 10 who've won the le the lifetime Solar Stone Club show guest list, right? Exactly, yeah. Oh, Banksy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so these are your record shop usernames. Mm -hmm. Not your Discord username. Josh, again, I see there. Do so we know? many OGAFs. We got JT, TGF, Sneaky Pete, Zach. All right. I think Tristan and Josh and CM are all, and Banksy are all, all of them are OGAF. How many of those guys are actually here in the chat today? Yeah, who's in here? We got. There's JT. Yeah, baby. JT. Yeah, real. Uh, we got TGF, I saw in here. Apostoli. Yep. TGF. Omna. Yeah. <laughs> Show yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we ready for the low serial numbers? Yeah, let's do low. Let's do it. Again. Holy 11. Or sorry. <laughs> buddy. Ghost buddy. We got Dad Tech. Buddy. Dad Tech, I saw in the chat. Congrats. King Dragon, congrats. Very nice. Nice. Wow. 20. And this was over quite a few cards, eh? A lot of familiar names in there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow. 20 lifetime guest list accesses. That is Congratulations, so everyone. exciting. Congrats, that's, guys. That's yeah. Wild. It's amazing. All right. Yeah. Are we ready to fill the mythical winner with a name? Is let's, it time? Do it. Yeah, yeah. All right, let All me right, get let's do let it. me get our fancy spin wheel going. All right, Rich, you got to warm up your your wheel spinning hand. Okay, yeah. So then we're gonna spin spin the wheel of trance. Yeah. Like <laughs> spin the the record. And whoever this stops on is going to be the winner. And this is uh, this is going to be exciting. I wonder who it's going to be. Who? I wonder, I wonder. So we have, what was it, 157 uh, names here? I think 156. Here? 156, I was off by one. Yep. Okay, ready? Ready. ready. Okay, Let's one, see you spin it. One, two, three, go. Zoo. <laughs> What's it going to be? Oh, my gosh. Uh... The winner is... Ooh, oh, great. 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 Wow. Nice, nice, Ooh, nice. Who that? Ooh. I think I've seen that name in the Discord. I'm pretty I sure. They're, they were active the in the, the name of the winner is Alo. Alo. Always Alo played great. Well, it's a username. So. It's that's, a their user. Use, that's their record shop username. <laughs> we want to know who you right, are. Let me, let me write this down in our results list here. Okay. Yeah, so, Elo, <laughs> we will have our... Oh, somebody says they think that he's Ogaf. So it may have nice. been around for a while. But we'll have... <laughs> it's not my uh, We are going to have our ch uh, new director of challenges reach out to you. We are really excited to meet you. Yeah. Active wow. OGAF. Sweet. I wonder if Alo played great is a man or a woman. It's a good question. Don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, but it's interesting. They haven't revealed themselves at all in the chat, it looks like. I'm jealous. You might not even be here. 
really need two women on my case during that day? <laughs> <laughs> during a <laughs> game show? <laughs> oh, well, we'll find out. Anyway. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Yeah, we're congrats. Get you in touch. We'll sort out redeeming the prize. That's exciting. Yeah. Whew. That's going to be I great. Back on. I wonder I wonder how much I can try and buy it from them for cuz I I kind of want to be backstage at ASO 1000 with all you guys. <laughs> I thought the rule was 10 spots from the arrow. Sorry, yeah. Phenom. <laughs> oh, they thought that we were going to be announcing 10 10 No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 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 okay. to sum up and it was 10 names from the actual winner and he was like I thought the rule was 10 spots from the arrow. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to get Elo and both of you to document the experience too. It'd be great to see some videos of of y'all hanging out and uh, enjoying the event together. That's a great idea. We bought a really nice new camera the other week. Oh, nice! We can we're gonna use for that. I think super super cool. And we'll see how uh, how much Paul puts them to work. Oh, Jr. To answer your question, so we are running into design delays again on this. Uh, we're getting close; they're almost done. I'm going to get them out as soon as I can, and we'll update the community once I have a firm ETA. Um, but yeah, we're they're they're delayed a little bit right now as far as the card designs. Yep. It will be worth the wait. Yeah, it'll be worth. They're looking good. They're just not quite the done. Guest list, so he says uh, it sounds like we need ten mythical winners to actually do Paula's job for a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad props to Paula. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna deal with a... I don't know. Ten of you at once would be pretty awesome. <laughs> That's Just gotta organize. That's the spirit. You organize it and all of them come to one show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's so awesome. Wow. You. That was that was oh, pretty well, awesome today. Just come to say hello. Hey Rob. Yeah, Rob's here. How did you say hey, his name? It's Babich. Oh Robert Babix. Robert Babich. Hey Rob. Nice to see you here. Thank you, right. JR. Mm-hmm. Man with the 303. That's Robert. <laughs> yeah. You have bright smiles and express good vibes is what Kama Ryan is saying. How many uh, challenge? We know that, don't we, Lisa? How many completed the challenge? 156, not seven. 156. Yep. So 156, all 156, they get the, the rare pure trance mix. Super, super excited for that. That would be cool. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And for any of those runner-up winners... The first show is on Friday, so I mean, is that how do you need to hold the collectible? I mean, just saying, any of those twenty winners, if they are in the San Francisco area, area, drop Chris a message, and we'll make it happen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, we can do some manual workarounds for you if you're in the San Francisco area. This one time. So. Yeah. One time. <laughs> so, the public works, and it's, uh, hopefully it's going to be a really great show. I haven't been to San Francisco for uh, four years, I think. A long time. Yeah. yeah. Scroll through the 156. We could do that. Uh, I mean, I'll drop the link again. Um, it might be easier than scrolling through the. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, and then Everything you can just search your name. Yeah. And I think you'll post this in Discord. Yeah, I'm gonna make an announcement here in a second. So awesome. Yeah, everybody who's here, I think we got up to 90 on the stream at one time. So everybody who's here got the sneak peek. Yeah. So we'll post it in Discord very shortly. And I saw Eileen in there. Thank you for hopping in and doing mod work in the chat. I know that's not easy to keep up with everyone sometimes. (laughs) Yeah, thank you so much, Eileen. We saw Angelica in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming today. It's been awesome. Uh, Rich and Paula, thank you so, so much. Uh, I think you can just tell by the excitement in that's going on in the chat, that's going on in Discord. We love having you both come on, it's chat with us. We, yeah. we love being here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we'll definitely pop up, pop into the Twitch much more often now. You awesome. should do a live or a, one day. We can do it and put it up as an NFT. There we go. That would be so awesome. 
Awesome, guys. Um, I'm going to find somebody for us to raid. Uh, oh, in, yes. in the meantime, please be sure to make sure that you've followed us, subscribe. We are, we've are we got some great content coming up in the next month and, and beyond here on Twitch. So we have loved seeing y'all here. I think Ali and Sheila are alive at the moment. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll drop, it, uh, I'll drop yeah. you the link in chat. Thank you. Yeah. Or just Congrats I guess everyone just who's the that card. We got multiple people getting cards. That's that's wild. Twenty and then the mythical big prize day. I'm gonna reply to a few of these guys here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's so fun. I think for the artists too that we've had on to be able to interact in like right away. Uh, we really appreciate it. The chat's yes. loving it. Hmm. Okay. All guys. right, raids coming up in ten seconds. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Best community. <laughs> y'all are the best. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Paula. Always a great. Thanks, Solarstone. Thanks, Paula.